in a human life, there are many things that are entirely beyond our control. And for many of us, we spend our life trying to get some semblance of control over those things that are beyond our own ability to influence. When we speak of religion being that profundity that is underlying all of creation, one of the effects of that is that our struggle is to align ourselves to the axis, to the direction of existence and creation itself, and not try to pull creation to my interests or my wants. And so sometimes if you make a dua or a prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you might have that question that, why is my prayer not answered? We do have a hadith that tell us that sometimes Allah answers a person's prayer on their terms because that person is too simplistic to understand the true meaning of dua. The true meaning of dua is to come to Allah and to say that I recognize that I might have money but I can't buy my needs. I might have intellect but I can't think my way out of my needs as a human being. I need your guidance, O oh Allah. I have this understanding of my best interest. I want to pay off my loan. I want to get help. I want my loved one to be cured of their illness. I want to have a child. I want this. But oh Allah, I know that my needs are known to you better than they are known to me. And so the true meaning of dua is not to ask Allah to give you what you want but to ask Allah to gradually change what you want to what He knows is best for you. In other words, to change your orientation from living life on your terms and ask Allah to give it to you on your terms, to instead telling Allah that this is what I'm asking you because I know no better, but you give me because you know better on your terms and not on my terms. And if you look at the life of those beloved martyrs and representatives of Islam, you will see that teaching represented at every moment of their lives. I want to draw your attention to just one incident, and we heard very eloquently the final struggle and sacrifice of Muslim ibn Aqeel. When he was captured, by Muhammad ibn Ash'as, the emissary of Ibn Ziyad, <coughs> Muslim ibn Aqil began to cry. And Ibn Ash'as said that, oh Muslim, somebody who set out to do what somebody like you set out to do should not cry if they are arrested or if they suffer death. And Ibn Aqil said that, I'm not crying for myself. I am crying because I was a messenger and I had a mission. And my job was to prepare the groundwork for my master Hussein to come to Kufa and to begin his mission to spread the light of Islam to all corners of the Muslim world and then from there to the rest of the world. And I see that Allah has decreed something else. If it were my own martyrdom, then I would not shed tears. I have submitted myself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But my tears are for the fact that with my martyrdom I see that the mission of Imam Hussein is also going to be a very mission, different mission, than the one I had set out for, and I had hoped for, and I had prayed for, prayed for. Allah has a plan, and He will attain our, His plan. I weep because I see before me the martyrdom of my master Hussein. I see the captivity of his family and his loved ones and the descendants of the Prophet.